Yo, what it do guys and welcome back to a, another video. Now, just the other day, D has released a Helm of Dev workshop. On here is all of the abilities that you will get if you subsume a Warframe to the Helminth. Now, if you're unsure of what all of this is on August 25th, it will make a little bit more sense. But as of right now, if you do happen to log into Warframe and you use Nidus or a Warframe that has a cyst on them, you should be able to go back into the Helminth room and you can have a little look right now and see that it's slowly starting to change. At the back of the room, you'll go and see the Helminth as well. You can't really interact with him just yet. You can kind of glitch through him, which is a little bit funny. But outside of that, um, this is a list compromising uh, and showcasing all of those uh, Warframe abilities, what to take, uh, what is good, and so forth. So let's just go ahead and get straight into it by starting off with Ash. Now with Ash is his first ability, Shuriken. Shuriken on its own is not really that good, but the augment here is very good. This will fully armor strip. So just get rid of armor completely. Now this is temporary, so it's not a permanent armor strip, but it is still full armor strip. Um, it does scale off durations. So the more duration that you have it is going to be better for you and you will need a little bit of strength to go and get that full armor strip. This is a good ability. Up next we got Atlas with Petrify. Just in the same the same boat as Ashir, Petrify is not really that great on its own. It's a little bit of crowd control, but what makes it better is Orgaze. Now Orgaze is probably one of the worst out of all the, the loot abilities, but it's still a loot ability. Now with the likes of this uh, and on the dev notes here, we will not create rubble. Um, that makes sense because that's tied to Atlas's passive. However, uh, Orgaze should be good and stacking with things like Ivara and her stealing passive and Necros and his Desecrate as well. So we'll go and see what happens here. But this should also be pretty much a good one with the Augment. So don't just sacrifice the Warframe here. Please go and pick up the Augment as well. It will make it a lot better. Up next, we got Banshee and Silence. Now, Banshee Silence on its own is actually a good ability, just overall. Um, it does require a little bit of juggling back and forth where you can go to make the crowd control more useful in your favor. But overall, it gives you like a good aura of defense uh, for her to continue surviving. On top of that, you got Savage Silence. Savage Silence is also a good um, augment to take here. It will give you plus 300% finisher damage. Um, I could see that pairing with other Warframes such as like Ash with Fatal Teleport, Excalibur and Blind Rage, uh, Blind Rage, so Radio Blind, sorry. Um, yeah, this is going to be an interesting one to look out for, but Banshee and Silence alone is just a good ability. Uh, moving on to Baruch as well, Baruch with LOL. Uh, again, another good ability. It takes a little bit longer for it to go ahead and go off, so the idea is that you press your two, enemies around you will slowly start to fall asleep. Uh, it's not as instantaneous as Ivara's Arrow, and it's not as instantaneous as Equinox's Rest, but it's still a good way of making enemies sleep. It also un them. So if they are aggroed, and if they are going at you aggressively, uh, they will kind of just forget everything, reset. So it's a good way to go and have that Endless Lullaby. It's an alright, um, it's an alright augment here. I don't think it's a necessity to go and pick up, but it's still good. The idea is that you recast uh, low on a finisher. Up next, we've got Chroma and Elemental Ward. Now, Elemental Ward, when it comes to Chroma's kit, he's got obviously four abilities, but two of the abilities are actually pretty decent, Vex Armor and Elemental Ward. We were not going to get Vex Armor, so it makes sense that we go and get Elemental Ward in here. Now, this is a good rotation. He's got some very good buffs on this list, so overall, I'm looking forward to this one, and this is definitely something that you should be picking up. Now we've got Ember. Now, Ember received a rework not that long ago for anybody who is retuning back into Warframe and is interested about picking it back up. Uh, the rework of her, her third ability, Fire Blast, um, definitely got a lot better in this sense. Still kind of the same premise, but it kind of works with uh, Immolation, which is her second ability. But for the idea, Fi Fire Blast is really good here. It will do crowd control, um, it will do armor stripping, and it will also do damage slash kind of DOT. So very, very good there. On top of that, the Augment, Heal and Flame, um, very, very good. It will heal for every enemy hit by Fire Blast. Overall, that's a, a nice bit of uh, utility to have in there, good a bit of survivability. So uh, definitely happy to pick up Fire Blast from Ember rather than things like Fireball. Now we've got Equinox, Rest and Rage. Now I'm actually surprised this one managed to slip through. 
anybody who does focus farming, uh, affinity farming, uh, farming up uh, warframes or, or weapons or so forth, if the word Sedna Adaro means something to you, then Equinox Rest and Rage will mean something to you. Um, Rest is a very strong ability to put enemies to sleep. It won't instantly lose their aggro, but it, at least it goes ahead and you know calms them down in the meantime. Uh, but this is a very good way for juggling something called Stealth Affinity and the Stealth Affinity bonus. Uh, this is a good way for ranking Warframes, and I've managed to rank some of my Warframes in about 3 minutes 30 seconds from level 0 to level 30. Um, it is very, very efficient. So to see that this ability is kind of being given up for other Warframes to have will be very, very interesting. Uh, the Augment is also extremely good as well. Calm and Frenzy. Um, if an enemy uh, is slept by Equinox's Rest, um, then another enemy that isn't slept, if you kill the slept enemy, it will spread on to the other enemy that isn't slept. Sorry, that was a bit of a tongue fall, but you should get the idea. Uh, it will use rest or rage depending on your energy color. So if you want to go ahead and get rest, just have a dark emissive color and you should be completely fine. Quickly moving on to Excalibur here, we've also got Radial Blind. This is the second ability. Very good ability, especially in the early game when people normally say to me, uh, you know, what kind of Warframe should I start off with? Uh, a lot of people go and say uh, Excalibur. His Radial Blind is very good for dealing with junctions uh, and dealing with uh, any kind of single target enemies that you have to deal with. Opens them up to finisher damage. Finisher damage does a lot of single target damage to that enemy. So very good ability here to go and get from it. Radiant Finish is just a 300% more finisher damage as well. Kind of similar towards what Banshees is. Not overly that great, but still interesting regardless to go and throw it in there. Um, definitely one to go and keep an eye on. Uh, I don't think it's that bad, but nor do I think it's going to be absolutely insane to go and pick up. Now we're moving into Frost, and Frost has Ice Wave. Now, I think even most Frost players don't even use his second ability, which is called Ice Wave. I think I would have preferred to have got his first ability here, Freeze. I think there's just a bit more utility and crowd control that you can get from it. Now, the Ice Wave in PD, I don't know if I said it correctly, in PD, um, it will leave a frozen trail that slows enemies. There is a bit of utility here, but in comparison to some of the others in terms of crowd control and so forth, this isn't really that great. Um, so, gonna pass on Frost here. Moving over towards Gara, we have Spectra Rage. Spectra Rage is definitely a good ability. Out of all of Gara's abilities, though, probably one of the least used ones, but it's her third ability. You will put a, a position of glass mirrors uh, in a choke point. Uh, all enemies that kind of try to bypass that or get around it have to kind of fight the mirrors they kind of get attracted towards them and try and break them down and so forth again a very good choke point ability the spectro siphon um is a 50 percent energy orb for every enemy that's killed kind of within the spectro range um i think it's okay i don't think it's top tier but i do think it's it's good utility to go and have i still think the augment's still worth picking up but gara spectro rage is still fine to pick up as well swiftly moving into garuda we have her blood altar now this is her second ability blood aura is definitely an Almost any ability you could have got from Garuda would have basically been really good for other Warframes. It would have opened up way more variety. Uh, Bloodletting, Dread Mirror. Obviously, it makes sense that we're not going to get the other two, but Blood Altar is still a very good one to go and get here. No tweaks on top of it either. Very good defensive, very good uh, area control. Uh, being able to heal uh, you and your allies by basically stabbing and goring an enemy within that kind of proximity. And that will scale off like strength and, and uh, range and so forth. So... Definitely a good one to pick up there. There is no augment on top of this, though. Galson is Thermal Sunder. Thermal Sunder is very good. You've got crowd control, you've got a DOT, and you also have some form of uh, blast as well. It's very good for area control. Definitely a good one to go and get from Gauss as well. I think any of them would have been good regardless. So uh, pretty happy with this. Then we're moving on towards Grendel. Grendel's going to go and give out his Nourish. Keeps the heal and gives the Nourish Strike only. Now, of, of all things you could get from Nourish, I think Nourish Strike is the one that we would have wanted anyways. It's kind of, I think, and I believe this is correct, I believe it's a weaker Toxic Lash from Saren. So uh, definitely going to be looking forward to getting Grendel's Nourish uh, out of this. And I'm going to have to go and test around and tamper with it and see how well it can do. Now we're moving on towards Harrow here with his Condemn. Now Condemn as an ability is his first one. Uh, is uh, a great ability to have on its own. But the Augment. Now Tribunal. 50% of the effects of Pedants and Furable uh, are given to teammates when they attack chained enemies. From what I'm aware of, Harrow needs to have... 
uh, uh, penance and Furibol active in order for an uh, ally to go and benefit off of the effects. In this scenario here, obviously we wouldn't have this from Harrow, we would give this over towards someone else, so therefore we wouldn't have penance and Furibol to go to benefit from. So I don't think Tribunal is going to be that good of an augment to pick up, but Condemn is fine. It's good for Warframes that don't have uh, any kind of crowd control, so uh, good ability to pick up. Up next, we've got Hildren, uh, one of my favorites in the game. And then we've got her Pillage. Uh, pillage is a way for her to strip out enemies' armor and strip out enemy shields. So overall, that's just going to be good on its own. She would drain her shields um, to go ahead and essentially get more shield back. And that would kind of scale with strength there. But because she doesn't have energy and her passive kind of comes from her uh, shields, um, this is going to obviously situate and kind of change when it goes towards other Warframes as they don't really use their shield for uh, ability efficiency. Um, so it's going to drain 50 energy instead of 50 shields. Um, that's still fine, not an issue. Blaze and Pillage, however, um, if I remember this correctly, you need Haven in order to go and set enemies ablaze. So again, just kind of like the Harrow and the C Tribunal, I don't know if these actually can be propped. If you had a Harrow and a Hildred in your team, and they were using Haven, or they were using Fearable and so forth, and you happen to have their other ability and so forth, yes, I could see it synergizing, but outside of that, I don't think you're going to need the Augment for Tribunal and Blaze and Pillage for yourself, so don't worry too, too much. Now we've got Hydroid and his Tempest Barrage. Now Tempest Barrage on its own is ah, god awful. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I'd put him with Frost and I would say don't worry about uh, getting Hydroid. However, Cronin Barrage actually isn't that bad, uh, but nor is it really that good. If we're talking about armor stripping, Ashes Seek and Shuriken does it better. Cronin Barrage, in this sense, is kind of working harder and not smarter. Um, I, I would honestly say you could pretty much skip Hydroid here, to be honest. But uh, it's still useful and there might be a particular comp where it may be even more useful. But we'll see what happens here. Um, I'll put it in the good bracket for now. Now we'll be moving on towards Inneros with his Desiccation. Now Desiccation is his first ability uh, where he will essentially just flick sand up in towards enemies' eyes, kind of blinding them and opening them up towards finisher damage and so forth. Um, as for Desiccation's curse, killing a blinded enemy with a finisher, 75% chance of summoning a sand shadow. Um, this kind of, to me, goes into the bracket of you don't have to care so much about getting a second Inneros. Um, I wouldn't really worry about this right now. I'm not overly impressed about it. Inneros is in uh, a state where, personally, I believe that he needs a full rework. Uh, and I'm kind of hoping he should be the next Warframe to go and get that love and get a full rework. So let's go and see what happens with him. But for now, you can ignore him. Now, we're moving in towards Ivara. And this one is... A this one surprised me. One of, one of the biggest surprises. Because we've got Quiver. Now, Empowered Quiver as well. We'll kind of come to that in a second. But if you tap, you get Cloak. Hold for Noise. Now, I was generally only thinking we would have got Noise or Dashwire. Um, or we could have got some kind of really low nerfed out Navigator. However, we actually managed to get Cloak. Um, Cloak is very good. Cloak is a very good survival tool here. So for a lot of Warframes that have an awful lot of offense, um, that can do survivals, that can do defenses, and can scale very well, but need the survivability, Tap Cloak here, well, it's Tap Cloak, Tap 4 Cloak here is a good way to kind of shoot an arrow in the ground, and if that Warframe is already scaling from range anyways, the, then they've got more range going and play around with the Cloak. Uh, this is a good ability. Very happy that somehow this one managed to go and pass through. Uh, empowered Quiver, Cloak has a 100% chance to prevent status effects, even better as well. So the survivability come from this one is top tier. I'd argue Ivara is one of the best ones that came out of this list. Um, definitely one to be grabbing up, especially with the Augment. Uh, keep in mind that the Augment only affects Cloak and Dashwire, but you don't get Dashwire from this. So at least it only affects Cloak. Up next, we got Korra and Ensnare. I think this goes without saying that Ensnare was just one of the best abilities you could have got anyways. Any ability that you could go and get from Korra, I mean, it was basically between Whipclaw and Ensnare because you can't get Venery. Um, it's good. There's nothing else I've got to go and say here. It's a good ability, so I'm pretty much liking this one. Now we're moving on towards Limbo and Banish. Now... This is very interesting, so we'll go to read the dev notes what it says here. It says, base ability change, add cancel ability on hold to let enemies out of the rift. I don't know how to feel about this. Um, This could be a potential cheese, this could be good, it could be bad. I think that one strat out there will go ahead and 
overly utilize this but i think majority of gameplay will not limbo is not something that you overly need right now he won't be your oh my goodness i need to get limbo right here right now kind of frame um pick up limbo maybe just a little bit later because as of right now i don't know where and when this is going to be that useful i can see a cheese strat happening here and i can see five heads and ten heads out there theorizing writing everything down it'll be very interesting to go and see how this one will uh will adapt in towards uh, metas. As for Rift Haven, uh, Banished allies will have 25% of their max health regained. Again, kind of leaning in towards that cheese strat. We'll see what happens with Limbo, but as of right now, uh, not one that I think you need to rush to pick up. Now we're moving in towards Loki and his decoy. Now Loki and his decoy, in my opinion, is not overly that useful. It's good for a little bit of diversion, but outside of that, that's basically about it. It's just a poor wisp uh, two will-o-wisp version so however save your decoy save your decoy actually is uh, very nice uh, the augment if loki takes damage the decoy absorbs it and swaps it uh, swaps its position for loki so you could put your uh, decoy you could put your decoy uh, behind a really 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 safe area you can go out there kind of fight and then whenever you're taking too much damage it'll then go and switch uh, switch you around so i could see a few warframes kind of using this and uh, using it for the survivability and so forth but I would say yes, it's good. The augment makes this so much better though. Next up, we're moving into Mag with Paul and Greedy Paul. Now we knew about this as well, along with Frost, uh, along with a few others. We knew of this one uh, before this list was kind of already announced. Uh, we saw this showcased at uh, Tenecon, uh, but Mag with Paul um, on its own, Paul is a good ability, nothing overly great though. It, it's just, it's kind of like the all right slash good bracket. Now, Greedy Paul goes into the good bracket, but it's still kind of niche. What I mean by that is you don't overly have to use it. I don't think this is something that you'll be instantly jumping towards. However, it would be good on loot f uh, farmers. So things like Korra, Hydroid, Necros, so forth, uh, Speed Novas, you get the idea. Whenever they're doing like material farming, I think the Greedy Paul could actually be a good way to uh, stay safe whilst putting the loot into you. And the second thing is um, Index. I think index and index credits as well will also be fine for those warframes that are quite tanky that can hold particular index. Up next here, we've got Mesa and her shooting gallery with Muzzle Flash. Shooting gallery will just uh, give you extra damage towards your weapons, kind of split between your uh, teammates and so forth. As a Muzzle Flash, I don't think this is an augment that you need to go and pick up. Um, every six assists by another player will cause your next shot to blind enemies within 12 meters for six seconds. Don't worry about Muzzle Flash, but if you do want to go and pick up shooting gallery, it's probably one of the weaker of the buffers and the buffing. Um, it's all right. Nothing overly too special here. Then we've got Mirage, and somehow we managed going and get eclipse i don't know what happened maybe the heavens opened and we got lucky i can't believe we got eclipse out of this so very very happy to go ahead and see it um eclipse will when standing in uh, lighting um you will go to get a damage buff to your weaponry but when standing in shades and shadows um you will go ahead and get a damage reduction now as much as i love warframe a tiny bit of criticism with this is the game doesn't seem to bear eclipse towards lighting at times kind of hard to explain when you start playing mirage you'll understand what i'm talking about sometimes you'll stand in an area that you know is shade and it looks shade and it is 100 shades but you're not getting the the, the damage reduction so then you die because you're like wait hang on I, that shouldn't have killed me i should have my damage sometimes there's a bit of an issue here however eclipse definitely still a good one to go and get out there even just for the day buff alone um now keep in mind before someone says, oh, um, I'm going to go and put my Eclipse on Chroma, right? I'll go and get rid of Chroma's one, put Eclipse on him. Unfortunately, for other Warframes that have other buffing weapon uh, abilities, so for example, Rhino, Chroma, uh, Mirage, just as a couple examples, um, if you was to go to put Eclipse on uh, on Chroma, you would have to replace his Vex Armor. You can only have either Eclipse or Vex Armor, okay? So just keep that in mind. Uh, it won't be able to stack there because if it does, it would be absolutely broken and it would it would be it would be nerfed, completely nerfed. There's no way it could get through like that, all right? So <laughs> that's not happening. It's great to go and see that we got Eclipse though. Very good one to go and pick up. Definitely go and pick up Mirage. Now we're moving in towards Necros with Terrify and Creeping Terrify. Uh, this all to me is just irrelevant. Uh, sorry, Necros, just this isn't something that you're going to overly want. Uh, Necros had Soul Punch and Terrify essentially up for grabs, and I don't think I care for near enough either of them. I would almost argue that I'd rather have Soul Punch over Terrify, but that's just my 
my two cents. As for the augment creep and terrify, it just basically 60% reduced movement speed to enemies nearby. Now we've got Nejar with his Firewalker. Now Firewalker gives you a movement speed passive, which I could imagine if you paired it onto something and the likes of like Gauss, or you paired it onto the likes of Volt, um, this will be really good. I also believe it also has some kind of parkour tied within it. Um, overall, this should be great. Um, any kind of speed running frame can go ahead and pick up Firewalk, what Firewalker, things like Nova as well. So good ability to go and get out of Nejar. Paraclastic Flow um is accumulate 150 percent of damage firewalker deals unleashing it in a trial of fire that last 10 seconds um i've used this before and i don't really think it's that great uh, personally outside of the passive of firewalker just damage wise i don't think it's that great but the passive for movement speed is great so take it for the passive and uh, the, the passive of movement speed if you really want to go fast najaz you're going to be your guy to pick up now we've got Nidus, and yes, no no surprise here, it's Lava. Uh, Lava is going to be, again, one of the top abilities to come out of this list. Lava is just such a fantastic crowd control ability, used an awful lot in uh, arenas like uh, Rafam uh, Vorjanoi, uh, Sedna Vorjanoi for endo farming. Uh, this could definitely go ahead and replace Nidus for that meta. Um, so to see it being given up there, trust me when I say this, you're going to want to pick up another Nidus. Uh, definitely going to be one of the best coming out there. As for his Augment Lava Burst, I'd still recommend picking it up. Um, you can reactivate it to detonate and deal 300 toxin damage within 5 meters. However, it does stack with every enemy grabbed by the lava. So the more enemies that you've got in there, then it's going to deal more and more damage. Um, ultimately and respectively, that does sound pretty good within particular factions and within some other factions, not as good. So it's still an augment worth picking up if you are looking for a little bit of extra fun and bursting at the same time. Because you're you're not really going to be going for stacks. So the good thing is here, someone else is now using it, you can just go ahead and shoot everything inside. If it's a Nidus using it, you don't shoot anything inside Nidus's lava because you need him to stack with his uh, one, his virulence ability. So uh, this is going to be a bit confusing, but I'm going to love it every second. Now we've also got Nova in here and with her Null Star. Um, actually, personally, I'm surprised going to see Null Star get through here. So we spoke about this on my uh, Twitch stream um, about in my opinion, how good Null Star can be. Um, yes, it is damage reduction. I believe it doesn't really overly go and apply towards shields and so forth, but for the most part, it's still damage reduction. Any kind of damage reduction, especially on some Warframes that had issues surviving, um, can now help them. It's just another layer. I don't see this as being absolutely broken, but I do see this as, and believe me when I say this, as a good player can definitely abuse something like this. I'm just going to throw it out there. Even if you turn around and say, well, no, that's not true because uh, they would need to refresh it that often. They would need to uh, mod for low range. But no, trust me when I say this, if you have seen some very good end game players and what they can already do, um, then believe me, Null Star is just an extra layer. So if they if they had a, partic a particular or potential brick wall that they were meeting, Null Star is another way to go and say, well, look, I can kind of help you push past that barrier. Hence why I'm saying Null Star is a good ability to get out of this. A Neutron Star, as for the Augment, can actually be like a recast, similar to like how Rhino's got his Iron Skin recast. Um, this is basically the recast for Null Star. So happy to go and see that that one got through. And I think this is a strong one to go and pick up. But it will mostly be strong to how well you can use it. How well you can pair it with other things like Rolling Guard. Moving in and out of your Operator. Lockdown, so forth. You get the idea. Um, it's it's going to be up there for some really skilled players. On to Nyx next with her Mind Control and Mind Freak. I think it's safe to go and say that unfortunately, I don't think anybody wanted this one. Uh, Mind Freak is 500% uh, extra damage whenever you go ahead and Mind Control an enemy. It's not overly that great. I'll be, I'll be dead honest with you guys. I don't think you have to worry about Nyx here, so don't worry about doing your invasions or so forth. Uh, it would have been better if we had got her 2. Her 2 actually removes enemies' defenses, so things like armor and shields and so forth. I would have really preferred her um her uh, her psychic bolts physic bolts i think it is i can't remember the name of it but yeah it would have been better for that now i'm moving in towards obron and this should be no surprise and also this is going to be one of the best things that come out of the list as well smite and smite infusion smite infusion has always been an amazing augment you can go in and see it an awful lot when people are doing eidolons uh a lot of bosses in this game a lot of end game tends to go ahead and default towards alloy armor now alloy armor is weakened uh, by bonuses to it from radiation 
<laughs> so this comes as no surprise that Oberon was smite infusion, given all allies radiation damage to their weapons is going to be one of the best things to come out of the list. Go figure. Um, definitely grab yourself a second Oberon, which shouldn't be too hard, and then go ahead and subsume that fella. Now we're moving in towards Octavia with Resonator, and uh, Resonator is an interesting uh, ability. Uh, I don't really typically use it as much, but uh, I've been informed, and I'm glad that my chat informed me more on this one. It is kind of like a whole you don't do anything kind of ability. It will kind of just somewhat break the AI without without actually being game breaking. The AI just mindlessly follow it around, not really overly doing anything. Uh, with Conductor on top of it, it just basically allows you to go ahead and control where you want the Resonator to go. Now, I don't think Conductor is an augment that you need, but I think Resonator is a good ability. Uh, it will go ahead and keep some of your Warframes that have issues surviving alive, um, and it could be used, especially, it probably could actually be used with Conductor in a particular cheese strat, but I'm not going to be too sure of how that is until uh, the future and uh, when people start discovering it. Now we've got Protea and we got Dispensary, uh, hurrah. <laughs> I don't know how we got this one, I'm not complaining. I don't think there's a single person out there who had an issue with Dispensary. Dispensary is good utility. Um, it cycles depending on what it is that you need. It does one cycle, a full cycle of uh, health orbs, uh, ammo packs, universal ammo packs as well, by the way, not just ammo packs, universally ammo packs and uh, energy orbs. Uh, and then it will just cycle to what you need. So if you spend some energy, it'll then just cycle to uh, energy orbs it'll just keep cycling them. Uh, scaling on strength, so it'll go and give you more on a return. I think Dispensary is a great one to go and pick up. I can see some supports out there that may have had like a bit of a weaker ability to replace it with Dispensary. Fantastic to go and get that. Then we're moving in towards Revenant with his Reeve. I think this is completely fine to go and get out of this. We weren't going to get as many skin or in thrall, so it makes sense that we go and get Reeve. Uh, Reeve is a good ability, very good for survival, very good for stripping out enemies' uh, defenses as well, and also very good for, I believe, lifesteal within it um, at the same time. So, Blind and Reeve, however, is not an augment that you'll be needing, so do not worry about that. Then we've got Rhino with his Raw. I don't know how this one slipped through as well. I thought we were going to get Rhino charged, but we didn't. Rhino and his Raw has managed to slip through. Now, without a doubt, an amazing ability to go ahead and get in here. Rhino is not going to be hard to go ahead and pick up. And yes, you've heard it right here, right now. Rhino is a good frame. Um, fantastic. Can't wait to go ahead and get Rhino's Raw. Uh, uh, this will definitely, along with uh, Smite Infusion and so forth, this will definitely go ahead and change the Eidolon meta. Uh, some Warframes are now going to just be like, there's no reason for them, and it's going to make current Warframes, like Trinities and Vaults, for example, just be even better by the way that they can now go and utilize other Warframe abilities. Fantastic. Then we've got Saren. It's no surprise that we get Molt out of Saren. We weren't going to get her one or three. If we did get her three, I'd probably lose my marbles. But we got her Molt. This was kind of a guaranteed anyways. We knew about Molt beforehand. Pablo had confirmed this on Twitter. As for the Regenerative Molt, Regenerative Molt is a good um, augment to have as well. Um, also, I kind of missed Rhino's Pearson Raw that you don't need to... Don't worry about this. <laughs> anyways, moving on towards uh, a Regenerative Molt. It's kind of like... Uh, there's an Arcane that does it quite similar where you switch in switch out i can't remember the name of it right now sorry i don't use it that often but it's just almost somewhat somewhat as similar as that uh, whenever you can press you two you leave your uh, molt behind um and then you regenerate health per second so it's definitely a good ability to go and pick up there uh pick up saren as well now moving on towards titania we got spellbound with spellbound harvest spellbind sorry not spellbound spellbind um is a good ability to go and pick up for itself the hold on cast will make you immune to statuses so it'll prevent further status uh statuses uh, trying to proc onto you very good like defensive ability it could be utilized very big against uh infested um, although it won't go ahead and obviously stop that damage, it will go and stop that proccing. So I could see some Warframes that have issues with uh, potential proccing and uh, enemies bypassing shields and so forth. Um, so those Warframes that have that issue, hopefully you can go ahead and put it onto them. I could see things like Hildred and Mag maybe potentially utilizing this. Um, as a Spellbound Harvest, not something that you have to worry about too much. Uh, I think it's something like you uh, hit four enemies and you get like 50 energy back. Uh, you don't have to worry about the augment, just forget the augment. But the Spellbind should be good to go and pick up and utilize uh, within particular comps. Uh, then we've got Trinity. Now Trinity just got changed. Um, her Well of Life. Her Well of Life 
beforehand arguably might be one of the worst abilities in the game uh, the idea is that you just pick an enemy up they'll kind of holster within the air you shoot that enemy whoever shot it will go and get health it's just no that's not how it should be done uh, they have actually changed this so the base ability is now buffed it now does a small amount of heal over time over a large range and if you hit the enemy a percentage of damage dealt gets converted into an aoe heal that's huge on top of that um the all of the accumulated damage when the ability runs out will then just kind of like go into the enemy so it, you don't have to worry about like killing the enemy for your aoe heal this seems extremely useful um i i would rate one of the best things to come out of this as well i think a lot of supports could easily go and take something like this uh depending on the range of it as well it does say a large range so i'm assuming anything over 10 uh, even maybe 15 meters uh, for a health over time very good ability as to the augment the augment is actually not too bad as well on death marked enemies will drop four health orbs with a 25 percent of an energy orb i don't see any reason not to go ahead and pick up that augment as well overall trinity is in a much better position and that ability is definitely going to be one to pick up now we're moving in towards Valkyrie with her war cry and eternal war i again i don't know chat we did it what what do you want me to say we we absolutely did it we managed going to get war cry of Valkyrie. i thought we were going to get paralysis i thought rip line was a little too kind of gimmicky that we weren't going to get rip line so they were going to give us paralysis but hey <laughs> we got war cry there is nothing else I can say. Valkyrie should be one of the ones that you need to go pick up ASAP. One of the best ones going to get out of this list as well, along with the likes of Rhino and so forth. Um, fantastic Warframes going to get out here. Eternal War is a great augment as well. Please go and pick this up. Warcry's duration increases by two seconds for every melee kill. Pick them all up. Bourbon. Ability, te uh, Tesla Nervos. Now, Tesla Nervos on its own, not overly that great, but the augment itself, Tesla Bank, is definitely a good augment to go and take there. Any damage dealt to an attached Nervos to an enemy will be absorbed and a burst of electric on death. Um, if you guys haven't done it before, uh, it is insane. It does so much damage. This is a very good ability to go and pick up there. I thought we were going to get Photon Strike. So pretty happy that we got Tesla Nervos. There could be some very unique kind of gimmicky choke point burst that people might start doing with some crowd control. Very interested to go and see this. Now we're moving on towards Volt with his Shock. Shock on its own is not going to be overly that great, but Shock Trooper, hold on cast. All allies gain 100% electric to their attacks for 40 seconds. Look, it's just good. There's not much else to go and say there. If you ever need to go and do some kind of machinery, or if you ever need to go and do some kind of like sentient health, um, just robotic kind of sentient health, uh, then actually this isn't too bad as well. Uh, pick it up. Pick up the Shock Trooper as well whilst you're at it. Now, these next three Warframes are just fantastic. Honestly, Wisp with Breach Surge, Wukong with Defy, and Zaku with Z uh, Zata's uh, Whisper. Uh, let's start off with R Wisp here. W Wisp has got the Breach Surge, arguably one of the best damage burst abilities in the game. The scaling on this is absolutely tremendous. Great ability. Pick up Wisp. No augment here, so don't worry about it. Wukong with the Defy, um, really good. It's got invulnerability, and then it kind of converts that... A vulnerability and absorb damage and so forth over towards uh some armor that he kind of gets left over so if there's any armor warframes out there that you need armor to go to make them better so i know there's like frost with his bubble there's rhino with his iron skin and so forth um i could see them utilizing this to fight very interesting this one got through there as well and then we also got zaku with zata's whisper now uh, zata's whisper uh, is his first ability i believe now he's not out at the moment but uh, this should imbue your weapons with void energy um, very interesting that this one got through here. This opens up a plethora of variety. Um, however, I don't know much else about it. So we're not going to know until we actually get our hands on Zaku. Uh, so stay tuned for that one, but do keep an eye out for him, okay? Then that finally le leaves us off on Sefi uh, with her airburst. Now, airburst did get changed a little bit. For the previous functionality, you now need to hold it. So if you want to go ahead and just make tornadoes bigger and knock enemies back, you now hold her to the cast. However, if you now want to go and pull them in, look at the ground, mod for like an awful lot of range, and then just keep spamming too. You can pull enemies towards you. You can kind of, it's kind of like walk the dog as a yo-yo. It's a very interesting uh, thing. In my opinion, though, it's not good enough. Not in the not in the list that we've got up here. So looking at this list and looking at what DE have offered us uh, with all of these subsumed warframes how do you guys feel about it i personally think this was way more surprising uh, than expected um some of the warframes that 
I think to keep an eye on, uh, at least my little list right now, will be Ash with his augment, Equinox with her augment, uh, Ivara with her augment, Mirage and her augment, Nidus and his augment, Nova and her augment, Obron and his augment, Protea, no augment, Rhino, no augment, Valkyr and her augment, Wisp, uh, no augment, and Wukong, no augment. Those ones for me kind of stand out as some of the better ones to be taken there. But on top of that, I did go ahead and have a little list, a little bit of a ranking in here. This is kind of my Discord that you guys are seeing right now. Um, if you guys do come over towards Discord, it's got something called Clark's Warframe builds, and I have an awful lot of channels in here that try and help people out. Uh, but this is kind of like, I, I like I said, I pretty much, I'm saying majority of this is good. It's just for the nothing really special, I think Frost, Ineros, Necros, Nyx, and Sephir don't really offer an awful 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 lot i'm not going to say that they're god awful i just don't think that they're special i really don't um but as to everybody else good really good or potential partic particular cheeses uh, things like trinity because i haven't tried her out yet zaku haven't tried them out yet limbo with the cheese atlas with loot stacking abilities and some of my favorites are going to be these ones here so you can always go pause the video and just go and give it a little read or you can come join us on discord.gg for slash no sympathy uh, but overall this list was much better than expected uh, i'm very excited to jump in towards the hell and jump in towards subsuming uh currently have majority of my warframes ready to go ready to go ahead and get eaten and killed off so i hope you guys have enjoyed this video i hope i've been able to go and break things down for you uh tell you guys what is good what to go and pick up and what is kind of a little bit mediocre but uh overall i would personally go and say good job warframe i'm definitely looking forward towards this and if you guys enjoyed the video today consider hitting the like button do go ahead and like the video uh subscribe if you are new and let me know what was your what was your biggest surprise uh what was something that you was like oh my goodness how did that slip through or uh what was um one that uh just you are ready to go to put on your main let me know chat because generally i'm i'm curious i'm really really curious but overall thank you guys so much for watching the video i'll be catching you guys again in the next one